You just have to forgive me for the way this question looks. I know it is a bit skewed and so on, but I'm trying to save time. I'm trying to do these questions as fast as I can, okay? Uh, but anyway, stories. Let's take a look at 5.1. Write down the value of P. So what are we dealing with here? We have F of X, which is equals to A divided by X plus P plus Q, right and then in order for us to find the i have to think about this to find the vertical asymptote we have to say that x plus p is equal to zero so x is equal to minus p this is how we find the vertical asymptote okay so let's take a look at our graph and see if we can determine our asymptotes uh, we can see the vertical asymptote here that x is equals to 1. That is the vertical asymptote. So what does that tell us? This tells us that when x is equals to 1, we have the vertical asymptote. Okay, we're back in business. x is equals to 1. So it should be easy to see that p is equals to minus 1. But let's see if this brings us back to the vertical asymptote being equals to 1. So we would have x minus 1 being equals to 0 x is equal to 1. So it's easy to see that indeed the vertical asymptote is equal to uh, minus, uh, indeed p is equal to minus 1. Okay, and then 5.2, determine the equation of the horizontal asymptote. Determine the equation of the horizontal asymptote. Um, the horizontal asymptote, we are looking for the value of q that is the horizontal asymptote q is right here we are looking for q that is the horizontal uh, asymptote so how are we going to do that we don't have um f of x right and then we don't have uh any number that is given close to the vertical asymptote like we were given in the vertical uh, close to the horizontal asymptote, uh, just as we were given on the uh, vertical asymptote. So how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to use the equation of the line of symmetry, right? Uh, we know that g of x is equal to x minus 3. Okay, g of x is equal to x minus 3. And our asymptotes, p and q, p and q, they meet at... Um, not p but minus p minus p and q minus p and q we know fully well that they meet right here at, the po at that point they meet uh, on the line of symmetry so we can sub we can actually substitute uh, the value of p in order to find the value of q because the value of p uh, is going to be our x and the value of q is going to be y so we have q being what we're interested in and then in place of x we have one right minus p uh, minus three so q is equal to minus two right uh, so we can conclude here and say that our horizontal asymptote we have y being equals to minus two this is what you need y is equal to minus two not q is equal to minus two i've seen these get might be wrong right on the i think it was the prelim in uh, how thin so you know you're not supposed to end with q is equals to minus two you're actually supposed to go further and say y is equals to minus two we are not looking for the value of q we're looking for the equation of the horizontal asymptote y is equals to minus two so there we go um right very basic things very basic things but with just a bit of a twist uh, really yeah they're very basic but uh, there's a twist so i would expect this question uh, to throw some people off uh, but anyway stories let's take a look at 5.3 so 5.3 we are looking for the value of a right we know that f of x is equals to a divided by x plus p plus q we're looking for a we're looking for a we have p and q so let's just sum them in our equation f of x is equals to a divided by x plus p so x p is minus one so x minus one and then q is minus two and then minus two right 
and then x minus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, so we have the asymptote there. Okay, I was just taking if I'm substituting them in the correct way. So this is f of x as we have it. We need to substitute a point into f of x so that we can find the value of a. That's what I'm thinking. There might be another approach, but uh, that's what I'm thinking. So let's see if we have a point here. We have a point we can substitute into f of x. Let's take a look. There has to be something we can substitute here. Uh, the graph of f cuts the x-axis, or not the x, but the y-axis at 0 and 1. So, okay, we know that this point lies on f of x, so we can substitute it. In place of y, we have 1, all right? And then in place, let me see, in place of a, that's what we're looking for in place of x, we have 0, right? I thought x is minus is 1. <laughs> Issues were going to arise there. I was not quite happy with that. Uh, so, a divided by 0 minus 1 minus 2. So, we have 1 being equal to a minus 1 minus 2. We take minus 2 to the left-hand side. We get 3 is equal to a divided by minus 1 a is equal to minus 3. Uh, I think we can just end it there. a is equal to minus 3. Um, but let's just go ahead and see if it makes sense. a is minus 3, x minus 1, minus 2, I think. x minus 1, minus 2. So let's substitute 0 and see if we get 1. Yeah, when we substitute 0, we get 1. So I'm quite convinced that that is the correct value of um that is the correct value of a and then 5.4 uh, for which values of x is f of x greater or equals to zero so let's take a look at this wing here when we take a look at that wing uh f of x greater or equals to zero well it is less than a it is less than <laughs> it is less than uh because that is below the x-axis right because we have the x-axis right yeah so that wing is below the x-axis so it cannot be part of our solution because it is always negative up until up to infinity okay and then let's look at this other wing uh, the other wing well when does it become positive we need to find uh, values for which it becomes positive uh is that easy to find uh we just know here that we have zero and one so it becomes positive somewhere here right that's where it becomes positive but we don't have the x value at that point so i think we <laughs> i think that i think that we need to actually uh, find the value of x for which it becomes uh it starts becoming positive right um so how are we gonna do that uh well what is the value of x when y is equals to um, zero okay so that's the question um let's take a look f of x we need it to be equals to zero so we have zero being equals to minus three divided by x minus one minus two so two is equals to minus three divided by x minus one okay so 2x minus 2 is equal to minus 3. So 2x is equal to minus 1. So x is equal to minus 1 over 2. So the value of x here at this point where it starts becoming positive is minus 1 over 2. So from minus 1 over 2 up until x gets very close to positive 1, our condition is satisfied, right? Our graph is going to be um it's gonna be greater than zero is that what we're looking for yeah we're looking for the values of x for which f of x is greater than zero so we need x uh, to be oh it says greater or equals to so we can include we can include minus one over two but we cannot include one because it is not defined at one right we just get very close to one but it is actually not defined so why am i using a bra and not a cat we're supposed to write this one okay so there we go that is um uh, 5.4 and then what about 5.5 what about 5.5 i'll let you guys talk about it in the comments what about 5.5 what about 5.5 i want to hear what you guys think but ultimately describe a possible 
transformation that f could have undergone to result in h what is the characteristic of h the domain and range of h are the same as that of f okay and then h of x h prime of x the derivative of h is negative on its domain so what is the possible transformation let me know in the comments but should i give the answer <laughs> okay i have the answer in front of me but i feel like if i give the answer then it is no longer fun so i'll let you guys talk about it in the comments and then you know after a couple of comments you know 20 30 comments yeah give me 30 comments and then i will sort of give you the answer to 5.5 yeah there we go which question do we do next we've done one to six do we just do seven eight nine ten eleven twelve let me know in the comments